This tutorial covers bundles. A bundle is a collection of nodes, usually objects. In other applications this is often called a group, but Houdini uses the word group to mean a collection of components, so points and primitives and so on. We'll look at how to construct a bundle, and also at some other ways of collecting objects together, parenting, subnetworks, and network boxes. Let's crack on and create a bundle. We'll select some objects, then right-click in the network view, not on top of the nodes but somewhere in empty space, then choose Add and Add Bundle. To see what we've done, we need to put up a bundle list pane. Let's expand the view a little so that we can see it properly. There's just one bundle. I can right-click on the name to rename it. There are controls for merging, duplicating and deleting bundles. You can also add more items to a bundle or remove them. And importantly, select the items in a bundle. The options for doing all this are in the menus, but there are also buttons to allow you to do most of the same things. You can also toggle flags for the objects in a bundle. The flags, as you'll recall, control, for example, the selectability and visibility of nodes. So if I toggle the visibility flag, the objects in my bundle are hidden. Now, since Houdini allows the editing of properties of multiple objects simultaneously, it's quite useful to collect objects in bundles, where we can then select them and edit the properties of all of the objects at one time. Let's demonstrate this by changing the material of the objects in this bundle. I'll lay down a clay shader in the shop network. Then going to my bundle list, let's select all the objects in the bundle. Now in the parameters pane, I can change the material to clay. and This will affect all the objects in the bundle. Bundles can also be used in cases where you need to specify a list of objects. A list of objects, for example, to determine what light illuminates what, and also what objects get rendered. If I lay down a mantra node, I can specify which objects are rendered on the Objects tab. Clicking the selector, you can see that we can choose our bundle and that when we select it, it appears in the list with an at character at the front. In fact, you could just type it in this way. I'll create a camera and quickly render the scene. As you can see, the objects in the bundle are indeed not being rendered. A brief word on Smart Bundles. You can create a Smart Bundle from the menu in the Bundles list. If you double-click the icon, you can enter a string which includes wildcards that will select by name the nodes to go into the bundle. Let's enter Sphere Star. As you can see, this has the unexpected effect of including both the Geometry node and the Sphere node itself. This is almost certainly not what we want. It does, however, demonstrate that you can use bundles to make collections of nodes that aren't at the scene level. It's not very useful, except perhaps to toggle bypass flags on a collection of nodes. Let's change our selection string so that it only selects the object node. So that's a quick introduction to bundles. One thing that bundles won't do for you is allow you to move collections of objects about as one, so to transform them as a, as a group. There are two other ways of achieving this, however. One is to parent one object to another, which we can do by connecting the output of one node at the scene level to the input of another. I'll want to select Keep Position When Parenting first. 
And whenever I move the sphere, the child object moves with it. The reverse isn't true, of course. When I move the child, the parent stays where it is. To unparent objects, you can simply disconnect the connection. Another method to transform objects as a collection is to use a subnetwork. To create a subnetwork, select the nodes you want and then either use the shortcut key Shift and C or in Houdini 10 there's a subnetwork button at the top of the network view. As we can see, we get a subnetwork node. If we double click on it, we can go inside and see that indeed the nodes that we had earlier selected are there. Going back up to the scene level, we can see that the subnetwork has its own transformations. We can select the subnetwork, then with the cursor over the 3D view hit enter, if the handles are not already visible, and then you can move all the objects in the subnetwork as one unit. If you want to take objects out of a subnetwork, take all of the objects out of a subnetwork, you simply right click on the subnetwork itself and choose Extract Contents. As you can see, the subnetwork disappears and its contents return uh, to the top scene level. The final thing I want to demonstrate is the network box. Network boxes are just a way of grouping nodes together within the network view. For example, to have nodes of a similar type or function arranged together. You could put all the lights in your scene inside a network box, for example. To create a network box, select the nodes you want to put into the box. And then you can use the network box button at the top of the network pane. The shortcut for this is Control N. You can rename the network box by clicking on the title. You can minimize it by using the control here. You can add a node to the box simply by dragging it into place. And similarly to remove a node from the box, you can drag it out. You can move a box and all its contents by clicking and dragging the title bar. To delete the box altogether, use the close symbol at the top. Network boxes are just ways to ensure that some nodes appear together in the network view. This concludes this brief tutorial on ways of collecting objects in Houdini. Thank you very much.